Hello, my name is uh, Stéphane Monnier, and I'm going to talk to you about, well, I'm going to present a bit of the life of a, a janitor. So, by and large, there's just nothing to see here. Uh, it's not, probably not super interesting, but some of you might actually like to see how I work, so I figured, why not? Uh, usually what I do just doesn't make any, any single, single significant difference. And so I basically take existing code that's working and I try to change it, hopefully without breaking it too much and make it slightly more, you know, following some of the more modern style, let's say. And sometimes along the way, it actually fixes some bugs. Uh, more concretely, the kind of things that I do is basically activate lexical scoping. That's really my main goal usually. But I also do things like convert from CL to CL lib. Sometimes I have to fix some comp compilation dependencies. I might convert from def advice to advice ads. And uh, some of the, many of the things I, I, you know, in terms of number of changes, most of them are actually changing quote font to hash quote font because I prefer it. But also it, it often helps me have a, a better understanding of which function is called where and so the the warnings I get from it uh, sometimes help me. You know, concretely, it's not nothing really clear. It's more in terms of helping me have a, a, a mental image of of the how the how the package works. So let's uh, let's take a look. Uh, I'm going to start with the the package heap, which I I saw had a a few weird things in it. So I'm going to compile it. That's basically the way the way I work, right? So I I take a package, I just pass it to the byte compiler. I, I do that by just having a, a clone of the whole GNU Elpa repository. And so that's that's where I, I built them. I use the, the build rules from the from the GNU Elpa repository. These build rules enforce make sure that the files are are compiled in a clean environment. So you get fairly good warnings. If you look at the warnings you see here, there's a lot of things which are completely irrelevant, which are due to details of the way I have my Emacs set up and some of the local changes I have in, in it. So, you know, not there's no point paying too much attention to it. Uh, but here we have a first warning. You know, it's we see that this is using CL, so we want to change this to CL lib, but that also means that we may have a new dependency on the CL lib package. So we have to go check the start of the file to see if. It already declares some de dependency, and we see it doesn't. Not even on a on a, a recent enough Emacs. So we have to add. Sorry, that's not going very well. Oh, okay, we're going to get there some, uh, somehow. Oh, that still wasn't it. Wow. Okay. And along the way, of course, since we convert to CLA, we have to update the users. So def struct shouldn't be used anymore. We may want to re-indent this uh, to get something a bit cleaner. Um, we have here a missing quote, uh, hash, sorry. Uh, we have decaf, so decaf is here, and that needs to be replaced with CL decaf. I can. Sometimes it's worth doing a search and replace. Here I see there's only two, so it's, it's not worth the trouble. I just do it by hand. And that's it. Well, that was easy. So let's recompile, see what it says. Ah, this is clean. Perfect. Let's, uh, we can go see. There was another one I had, uh, what was it? Council, I think, yes. So also I saw some funny things going on here. So I'm going to do, oh, sorry, the same, the same procedure as before. I just compile the file and look at the warnings. Oh, we have many more here. So let's see. Okay, so we have missing quotes. Oh, hashes. They're not really missing. It's just a just a personal preference. Oh, here, here's an important one. So as as you know, uh, you, if you look at the top of the file, you see that 
here it says you know it's using lexical binding yet it's not fully using lexical binding because as we just saw there's a call to the eval function with only one argument which means the second argument is nil which means that the expression read by read here is going to be evaluated using lex uh, the old dialect which is only dynamic scoping so here i like to just change this to use lexical scoping which in most cases it just doesn't make any difference it just makes me feel better um so here's uh, so there's lots of those hashes all over the place okay I, it's not strictly necessary as you know but i'm just going to add them anyway here we see it does not going to warn me here because it doesn't know that iv make magic action takes a function, but it's it's pretty good guess that it does. And here are some more. What else do we have? Is that all we have here? Uh, Oh, looks like it. Oh, I see the a few more, a few more here. And one more. And, oh, this is more interesting. So here we have a use of def advice. So if we go back to the beginning of the file, sorry, we see that it actually depends on Emacs twenty four point five. So it it actually has. Uh, the new advice system available without having to add any dependency. So there's really no good reason to keep this. So we just convert this to an advice add. So it just says, you know, this is the function that's advised. Uh, this was a before advice. Uh, the before advice, sometimes when we convert it to the to advice add, need to be converted to an around advice. This is when the, the function looks or modifies the argument. Uh, in this case, if I look at it, I see it doesn't seem to be using the arguments at all. So I'm just going to uh, keep it as a before advice. And we have to give it a name. Well, we don't really have to, but it, it's, it's convenient to give it a name to the, the new function. And so here they actually had a given a name to the advice, so we're going to keep it. And indeed, it's the only function that this name is not used as a function, so we can use it as the, the name of the function. I'm going to add a dash here because I think this function is really really fundamentally an internal function. So here I just said I advise add the advice, but I still need to actually define the function. So that's why I do here. And we need here to, to list the arguments that are going to be taken. I don't know what these are, but I know we don't we're not using them. So we'll just accept anything and that will do the trick. It's a future proof as well, so that should work. Oh, here we have another. So it's basically the same story, I think. Um, uh, it's a before advice as well. It doesn't seem to be using the argument at all. And uh, let's see if this name is not taken. Yeah, good. So we can just do the same. Turn this into an advice add. The before, oh, sorry, I just add a dash here. And same thing, the function that just takes, because I don't know which arguments these are, so I think that should do the trick. Uh, actually, we see that this function is very similar to the other one. Let's look at the two side by side. Um, so it has, it really is, oh, it's not exactly identical. It's, you know, we could try to merge them into a single function, but it's probably not worth the trouble, so we can keep it this way. Okay, next warning, an eval again. So I could just add t here, but if you look, uh, just look at it a bit more, you see that the code we're going to evaluate using either lexical scoping or dynamic scoping is actually just 
evaluating a symbol since we're just calling intern here. So instead of replacing this by adding an argument, I'm just going to call symbol value because that's exactly what we need to do here. I, I call this a strength reduction. I'm using a, a more primitive function instead, which does just what we need. And this one knows that it has to be accessed by dynamic scoping, of course. Here I have a k macro ring. So here I have a function that uses k macro ring comes from the k macro package, obviously. And we probably don't want to require k macro package all over the place in, in, k, in console itself, because console can be used without k macro. Um, so I think we're just going to add a, a def var to silence the warning. And we have several more. So we have uh, initial counter value. Oh, sorry. We have k macro counter. Do we have more? Oh, yes, we do. We have k macro counter value start. And k macro counter format start. Okay. And I hope this is it. K macro ring counter ring blah blah blah. Uh, here we have another one quote. Here we have another hash missing. It's not missing anymore. Anyway. But same thing here. Um, okay, this is a function from k macro. We could declare it just to silence the warning. Although we don't actually normally when we when we declare such things, same thing for variables, we should try to make sure that indeed by the time the code is executed, the function will be available. And and then very often it's because there's a require sometimes inside a function, and so we should put the declare function right after the, the require. But I don't think it's the case here. So I'm just going to, to add this. I know this comes from k macro, and I could actually check the arguments. It's just taking an, an optional argument, so I'm going to even put it there. So, so we have it, I'm sorry. Complete. Okay, we can just recompile, see if uh, what is left from those warnings we've fixed, and it may we may have new warnings in any case, because especially when we new, when we add the hashes, it it tends to to give us more warnings. So we have two more functions which are not known. We can just add them here. Sorry, set format k macro. And same thing for set counter. Okay, whatever. This just takes a format argument, and this one just takes an arg argument. Okay. So let's see what this says now. Hopefully there's no warnings anymore. We're done. Okay. Okay, uh, the last one we're going to see is in ENWC I saw the other day. I think I have it here. Uh, sorry, here we go. Yes. So ENWC is, a, is an interesting package here because it has, as you can see, it has as it's lexical binding, but actually some of the files in it do not use lexical binding. So it has been partly converted, but not completely. So here I'm going to enable lexical binding. I have also, I think in CM, yes. So 
I uh, enable it here and also I can hit test. The test files are often somewhat problematic because very often they, you know, they're not quite uh, as heavily tested themselves actually uh, or, or they, they only run in very specific contexts and so so they may have problems with missing requires or, or using packages which are not explicitly in the dependencies and those kinds of things. I think this is not the case here but we'll see. ENWC yes I want to save this one and that one let's say what it says okay unused lexical variable x x yes so here we have a uh, an unused variable and indeed it's not used it would probably had to be named before because it was uh, so with dynamic scoping at the two, two times requires the variable to be named actually because it's used internally somehow but with lexical scoping, that's not the case. So we can just put an underscore. I'm going to change this because I really don't like this uh, three parts do times. I prefer to have the, the return value at the end instead of kind of stashed hidden in the middle. But just a personal preference. Okay, what else? We have a widget. Okay, this argument here says that it's not used. So if we look at, oops, oh, sorry. Um, Where were we? We were here, right? Yes, right here. Oh, indeed, widget is really not used. Sorry. Uh, here's what I, I get for using a somewhat vanilla configuration of Emacs compared to the, the one I use, the, the, the personally tricked one. Actually, I can. So we can just mark this argument as unused. We don't want to remove the argument, probably, or maybe we could. We could see where the function is used. And here we see that it's passed as a, as a high order, uh, to a higher function, basically. So it's going to be, we can't really change the calling convention. So we have to mark the argument as being just an unused argument, but we're going to still receive it. And here it says same thing that widget is not used in this function. Let's take a look at the function. Indeed, it seems it's not used, and so we're just going to mark it as unused. This is the part of lexical scope, conversion to lexical scoping that's somewhat uh, tricky sometimes because uh, we don't really know whether this variable should be using lexical scoping or dynamic scoping. And the fact that it's not used is a, is a hint that there's probably something going on. So either it's not used because it should be using dynamic scoping and it's going to be used by some other code somewhere else, or it's really not used because it, it's just not used, right? And so we need to, to distinguish the two. And for that, there's, you know, the, I basically use my own judgment. This is based typically on the fact that this is uh, just a very short name. And most, uh, most local identifiers use short names, whereas identifiers used for, for dynamic scoping typically have a package prefix or something like this. So the fact that it's a short name gives me a a good idea. Here in this case, I actually look at the code and, and we see that there's nothing in here that that may actually refer to this variable widget. So I think that it's it's safe. But in the general case, we may look here and, and be surprised. Uh, or you know, you may, you may call out the functions which may themselves end up referring to this variable. So so sometimes we need to investigate a little more. We most of the time we're not completely sure whether the result is correct or not, of course. Uh, so the other thing you, you may want to check is also uses of things like eval or symbol value. Uh, so, so it's often a good idea to search. And you do a search of uh, eval and you see here it's using eval. Hmm. Okay, so what does this eval do? It's evaluating expressions that appear in args here. So we can see where those args come from. And we see here these are expressions that don't do anything very special. Uh, it's just using make supplicant choice and make supplicant choice itself just doesn't refer to widget, for example. So, you know, we should be safe. But while I'm here, okay, well, then we can do that later. Well, that's actually the next warning, exactly. So here we see that 
this is using the dynamically scoped dialect, so we convert it to lexical scopes. Of course, this may introduce errors, but we hope it doesn't. And actually, it's, it was a good change here because if you if you see again, uh, this actually evals expressions that appear here in args, and so they, these are expressions that are passed here. So this expression here used to be evaluated used with dynamic scoping, even though it appears to be you know normal code within this file which says it's using le le lexical scoping. And so, so there are some remnants of dynamic scoping all over the place in, in Emacs still, because we have those calls of, e of eval with, with a nil argument. Um, here we have cons, that needs to be hash quoted. And, oh, and we have a, a reference to this variable in the OCID. So this is clearly a dynamic scoped variable. We can either add a def var to silence the warning, or maybe we can re require the package, the file that, that defines it. So let's let's see which one we want to do, sorry. So let's see where it's defined. Uh, I see here's defined in, in nwc.el. So I'm going to try just to add the dependency. I'm going to require here. This is risky. We'll see when we compile the file later. We may get a, a circular dependency because of it. So uh, if if that's the case, we're going to have to re remove this require and instead put dev files. Sometimes it's worth actually looking further at, at the various files to see how to redefine the dependencies to break those circular dependencies. But it's probably it's often not really worth the trouble. Um, Oh, no, that's not what I, I'm, I'm not going to the right place. Here I was, exactly. So here, edit map. Um, well, we can probably, it may disappear. Oh, 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 I see. Oh, okay. So this edit map actually is defined in this very file. It's just that it's defined later. So we all we need to do is to move this definition to before its first use, since otherwise it's going to be taken as lexically, lexically scoped, which we don't want. And while I'm here, I see this copy key map. I don't like copy key map. So I'm going to change this to, to a, a normal key map. And then I'm just going to use set key map parent instead of copy key map to get basically the same result, but without having copied anything. And this one will disappear, this one as well, or should hopefully, be thanks to the require. Um, here we have a quote missing, or a hash missing, and, and we have some functions which are unknown. So let's see, where is this function defined? Nowhere! Ah, wonderful, okay. So we'll just leave it at the, uh, like it is, and that's going to be for the the author of the package to fix. How about this one? Um, oh, okay. So it's defined in enwc.el. So presumably this is going to disappear as well. Oh, sorry. And uh, one more. Um, okay, so this one is just like the previous one. We're going to leave it at that. And this is it. Ha, ah, wonderful. So let's recompile. Oh, we have a, a warning for fin. Okay. Um, so this variable seems not to be used anywhere in the file, so we're just going to remove it. I leave it there just in case someone needs later on to look for a fin variable to see where it used to be. Again, you know, maybe it's actually used yeah, dynamic scoping somehow, uh, but given the short name, I presume this is not the case. Here, oh, that's the code we moved that had a, a hash missing. That's the one that's not defined. This one is not defined, and this is it. 
let's make a, a last recompilation to see if we missed yet something else no and that's it okay well here we go we're done okay so this was it uh, you've seen i think pretty much examples of all of those and uh, i hope you enjoyed it uh, lessons to take home use the byte compiler you can also use fly make mode instead as that's you know I, I recommend enabling it as much as you can and heed the warnings you know follow the warnings try to fix them if you can fix all of the warnings it's always much better because then the new warnings really show up and once you've done you need to do it again yeah, because it, there's always new things coming up and um, i think this is it i hope you liked it and uh, thank you for attending the, the this presentation Bye.